Today, brought you to Makings Fishery, come and sat on Lake One. I'm going to look at doing some traditional sort of ground bait feeder tactics, cage feeders, fishing for skimmers during the winter months. Bit of a sort of like winter twist on things, using what you'd sort of use on a natural venue, like and applying it to a commercial. So a bit longer hook lengths and things like that. And um, yeah, we're just uh, going to see if we can catch a few. So let's have a look at the baits we've got for today's session. So I'm just going to run through um, the baits that we've got today and like the reasons for using them. Obviously we're targeting skimmers today on a feeder, commercials, a lot of fish in lakes like this. And, but at this time of year, it pays to keep it quite simple on the bait front. You don't want to give them loads of options. So just quickly run you through it. I've got, this is my main feeder mix here. This is um, ground bait mixed with lean. Um, and a little bit of black trassics added to it, just to give it like a nice little cloud as it comes through the water on the feeder, just picking off a fish or two at a time. If the fishing's good and catching a lot of fish and I want to pull some bigger fish in or like maybe change my peg a little a bit later on, I've got just neat ground bait there. Um, in this tub here, I've got some, um, this is just damp lean and again, this I can use to put in my feeder. I can change the way like things happen in the water just to give a different slant on it, but I'm not actually changing anything bait wise that I'm putting through. Um, and just going on to that, I've got some maggots here. So, so there's some live ones um, in there. We've got some dead there, just a mixture of reds and fluoros. Fluoro is really good at this time of year. Nice standout bright bait. Uh, again, pinkies, um reds and fluoros live ones there and also some dead ones there that are just killed you know with uh, putting cold water on them and leaving them in the fridge overnight and that is literally it um i've got a few casters with me might might put them in a bit later on if it's good uh, and i've got a few red worms if i decide to chop chop a few worms up i've got some there again just to change things around but i really i want to just stick to using the pinkies and the maggots mainly dead ones and looking to get a reaction from those baits uh, and that's it really on the bait front as simple as that Right, so uh, we've been fishing about probably half an hour now. Um, had a nice little response, so we got a bite straight away. Uh, I've had a skimmer, a couple of roach, nice roach as well. And I'm um, just going to run through you, like the ground bait and the way in which this is working and what I think is happening in the water. So I'm filling the feeder up. I've got my, fit, my mix here. It's got lean in it. It's very fine. Um, and it's also uh, the ground bait as well. So there's two parts to it, all mixed together, pass through a flour sieve. And what that, what's happening with that is when it's going through the water, I, I reckon where we're fishing is probably nine or 10 foot deep. And when it's going through the water with these feeders, it's coming out like as it's getting towards the bottom. So it's, it's getting a reaction off the fish, like virtually straight away. And it's not took me, like I say, it didn't take me long to get a bite. In fact, I got a bite first chuck. So it's proving that it's working. One thing like with lean, when you use it in your ground bait, is it creates like a nice cloud for the fish to home in on. And this time of year, when the water's on the clear side, it can just take that little bit of spark to get them to have a go. So I'm gonna chuck this out again now, hopefully get another one. So just give that like a, a tiny little pull. I don't know if you've got that on the camera there, but give it a tiny pull as it 
as it got near the bottom, I pulled my feeder so it's the bait's sort of bursting out of it. There's a little indication there straight away. So that fish is it's home straight in on that clad. Oh, I missed that one. Just felt it, but Oh no, there is one on. It's a little one. Hee <laughs> hee. The old can. See, what can happen as well is um, if you do it too much, you can bring, you can sometimes bring a lot of small fish in your peg. So you got to sort of like tailor your feed to suit what's happening. So I can always add some more of this ground bait that's just neat ground bait there to that or just change to just fishing neat ground bait if I think it's going to be better to catch a better stamp of fish but to sort of kick the peg off I'm adding lean with it obviously because it's you know we're into December now it's really cold um, and you need to be getting bites sooner rather than later Right, so I'm just going to run you through the setup I'm using today for doing a bit of winter silverfish fishing on commercials. As with any type of fishing, you've got to like match your gear to the conditions and stuff. We've got a, quite a nasty crosswind today, fishing at probably about 40, 40 odd metres. So I've gone for a 12 foot 6 XC class rod, 70 gram rating on this one. Um, we can get there with 40 gram, but it's a rod I'm comfortable with, it's, it's going to get there no matter how bad the conditions get, it's nice and comfy to fish with. We might set to a 5,000 reel, uh, this is a Horizon reel. I've loaded this up with a, a six pound Horizon main line. Uh, it's got a 10 pound shock leader on here. That's, gonna, that's running right down to where my feeder is. The feeder's on a little free running system there. It's, it's in line with obviously with most fishery rules. I tend to fish this way on commercials a lot of the time. I've then got a little stop cutting off there with a little um, silicon sleeve over the top of the knot, which is basically that there. It's just a little twizzled boom of, uh, of the main line. It's got a fairly big loop in the end of it to, to sort of kick the hook length off so we don't get in too many tangles. Hook length wise, I've got 013 um, power micron and that's down to a 16 prototype hook. And it's that simple, really. That's how I set up for fishing in commercials on winter for silverfish. Right, so we've um, been fishing a little while now and I've changed what I'm doing as in like what I'm putting through the feeder which is essentially what feeder fishing is all about. So I've started on like the 50-50 lean and ground bait mix to get a nice cloud in the water. It's pulled a few early fish in. I've caught a big roach, a nice skimmer like two pan and then I've gone and I've missed a few bites, started catching small roach. So I thought to myself, well, if I put like a stronger mix in, like basically pure ground bait, well, I'll put that in and then see the reaction I get. Like after two chalks, I caught a skimmer. So that told me that I was changing something. So I've then continued to do so. And to be honest, it's been loads, loads better. It really has. It's just completely changed the peg in all honesty. I mean, I can... I can certainly, you know, go back to my original mix, um, my, my Lehman ground bait. If I feel I need to restart the peg again later on, I can, I can like put a quick couple in, 
create a little bit of a clad and you know maybe draw a few more fish back if they get a bit wise to it but at the minute this certainly seems like the best thing to do um you know just going down the just more ground bait route putting a few casters in there and if odd dead pinky um I've just had this chuck with double caster actually. I'm just going to see if I can I can pick pick one off with this. But it's it's certainly got a lot better, and that's just literally it. Just shows you the the difference. So if I'd have just mixed that up, I might have just caught a small roach all day and an odd skimmer and an odd you know better roach. But now I've I've got the option to change. I can switch it. I can I can I can keep bites coming all day, and that's. That's what it's all about, really, to be honest, um, at this time of year, just, just keeping, keeping the rod going round or keeping the float going under. As you know, there is a vast selection of feeders on the market nowadays, so um, I'm just gonna run you through the ones I tend to use in the winter when I'm doing this sort of fishing. You've got your traditional sort of like bullet type. These are very good for um, if you strike your bait out on the top, it'll, it'll release it straight away. You can also pack them quite hard and it will come out in a small trail on the way down. We've got a bottom weighted version. This one, more for getting your bait down near the deck, you know, changing the way that you're fishing. So if you're fishing to get fish in and around your feeder, just off bottom, you can then pull them down with this one. You can, you, you know, just changing. And this is what it's all about feeder fishing. You've got to just change what you're doing all the time to keep the bites coming. A um, Couple more, there's the Horizon feeder there. This one is actually a fan, really good for when you plug your bait in. If you don't plug it in too hard, just like push it in it will actually get it to the bottom with a small trail coming off. Um, it's similar to this one, but not the same. I think more releases with this one than it does with the Horizon. So this is good for like, you know, when you want to try and fish on the bottom. Um, and it's also extremely, extremely accurate because it's obviously the aerodynamic design. So very good for that. Um, next up, we've got the Orbit, which this is very good for fishing through the water, you know, with the big holes on the side and when you need to, your bait needs to be coming out as it's going through the water. So for like, you know, roach fishing or creating a bit of something in your peg uh, to make something happen. Again, it's just a, a good change feeder and I keep a, a selection of all different sizes and weights just so you can change something again throughout the day. You know, when things get hard, you stop getting bites, put a different feeder on, it's like changing your peg again. It's the same as, you know, what you do with your ground bait and what you put in your mix. Um, and last up, uh, I suppose it's worth talking about, I've just got a bomb. Sometimes when it's really difficult and if you've, you've been fishing a while, you, the fish can like back off and chucking a bomb out and going just past your feed is actually a really, really good way of picking an extra fish or two off. Uh, when they don't really want that much bait anymore. So especially when it's absolutely freezing cold and say you've been fishing like three hours or something and you've caught a few fish and you, you want like an extra couple, really good little tip to, you know, get you a few more bites. So, yep, they're the feeders I use and um, the reasons why I use them. It's just all about changing what's happening in your peg. So um, hopefully those little tips will help you with your own fishing. We've got a cracking bag of fish here, um, some nice skimmers, a couple of big roach in there, all on traditional feeder tactics in the winter time. And um, I hope you can, you've got some nice tips from the video uh, to help you catch more fish when you're next out on the bank. <laughs>